you've just started cycling, you're out and about enjoying riding your bike, getting the fresh air and getting the bug for cycling, it won't be long before you're going to want to set yourself some challenges on your bike. So what's your first challenge going to be? If the furthest you've ridden is 25 kilometres, then it's probably not worth setting yourself a goal of riding 200 kilometres because you'll be knackered, you might bonk, and it will just be a not very enjoyable experience. So all those long rides will come later. So let's start a little bit smaller. Yeah, start with something manageable. Let's say 50 kilometers. Now to many of you, that might not be very far, but if you're just starting out 50 kilometers, just over 30 miles, it's a long way on your bike. So in this video, we're gonna give you some tips on how to ride 50 kilometers. rides have been a fair distance under say 25 kilometers then you can probably head out the door without much thought you don't really need to pack any food and you've probably got some leftovers in the fridge for when you get home yeah but if this is the longest ride you've ever ridden and 50k is a very long way then you're gonna need to take some snacks on the bike with you to keep you nice and fueled so you can make your way well, make it through the 50 kilometer distance. Now you can get some cycling specific food like this, these Enervit gels to get you through the ride and they have everything you need to energize your body for the ride. Or you could do some real foods like bananas and fruits or brioches, it seems to be a good one. But if you want to push the boat out a little bit more, you could do some homemade energy balls and homemade rice cakes. I haven't managed the rice cakes, but flapjacks, they're all Yeah, and energy balls. And you want to take something that's going to agree with your body on the bike. You don't want to take something that you're not going to look forward to eating. You want to look forward to that mid-ride snack. So there you are, man. On two for you, two for me. Oh, oh go. I got a bit of caffeine in them as well. Ooh. Great. Now, depending on how hard you're riding and what intensity you're going at will depend on how much fuel and how much you need to eat. If you're doing a low intensity ride, I would tend to eat around a bar an hour, and if I was going harder and more intense, I would look at doing a bar every half an hour. And kind of the same goes for drinking and bottles too. Now you can eat whilst you're riding, but if you don't feel confident doing that, you can always stop off and have a quick snack. But it is possible to eat on the ride. Just make sure it's on a nice flat bit of road because eating uphill is pretty hard. I get quite out of breath. Sounds like you get out of breath I'm talking out, too. I'm out of breath talking too. Woo. If there's one phrase to remember when it comes to eating and drinking on the bike is little and often. What you don't want to do is go for a hours and hours on end and then eat a huge massive meal. Well, that's not going to be very good for you because what that will happen is, well, it won't let you digest properly and you will have already eaten into your energy reserves. So remember, little and often. Always be prepared for a mechanical. There's nothing worse than being out on your bike, enjoying your ride. Next thing, you have a mechanical and you've forgotten your spares and you have to cut your ride short. Yeah, so what we would recommend is you get everything you need to be able to fix some of those simple mechanicals like tyre levers, inner tube, mini pump and a multi-tool. And a mobile phone is also useful in case it's a little bit more than a puncture. But all these things can fit very neatly under your saddle in a saddlebag. Or if you don't have one, you can always stick them in your back pocket of your jersey. Yeah, where's your saddlebag? Well, I am in a bit of a sticky situation here. Yeah. I forgot my spares, didn't I? So don't make the same mistake we do and make sure you have everything you need on your bike. Can you help me out if you've got some spares? Yeah, let me sort you Thanks. Out. Knew I could rely on you. If you aren't too sure on how to change a puncture or do some simple maintenance on your road bike, then we have a maintenance book that has everything you need to know about road bikes. Now we're on to maintenance. We need to give our bike a once over before we head out. Make sure the tires are pumped up to the recommended tire pressure. Make sure your gears are running nice and smoothly and your brakes are working. I've got to say, I absolutely love tracking my rides. See where I've been, how far I've ridden, what kind of pace I've been doing. Now, I use a bike computer like this one, like my Wahoo here. But if you don't have one of these, then you could use an app on your smartphone. 
We at GCN like to use Komoot to plan out our rides. And if you want to get to 50 kilometers exact, I would definitely recommend planning out your rides. It also has some cool little features and you can have some points of interest on there so you can take in some pretty views or stop off at some amazing cafes to spice up your ride. Now it's very exciting to get tempted and head out a little bit too fast on your first 50 kilometers. You want to pace it. Yes, yeah, so when it comes to your longest ride ever, you want to go out to the nice easy pace, a pace that you can sustain for a long period of time. What we don't suggest you do is head out the door, sprint, do 30 minutes at a really high and hard pace, and then die. Go at a pace that feels comfortable for you and don't get carried away with other cyclists passing you or in front of you and trying to catch them. You don't know how long they're going out for and everybody has a different level of fitness. Concentrate on yourself and a pace that feels right for you. Don't be afraid to stop off. If you're feeling a little bit knackered and you want to catch your breath, then pull over. And if, well, you stop at a really nice view and you've got an amazing vista, then this is a perfect opportunity to take in the view. After all, exploring on two wheels involves taking in the outdoors. And look at that for a view. You might even notice there's a massive house over there. And it's not mine, unfortunately. Remember to keep it well fueled when you're out on your bike. It can be quite easy to be out enjoying yourself and forget to eat. One minute you'll be feeling fine and full of energy and the next minute you'll be bonking, running out of energy and stuffing yourself with food. So you want to avoid that and keep well fueled. Now, if the going gets really tough, the best thing you can do is stop for a cafe break. This can help you get refueled and recharged, ready to start the ride again. So, how are you feeling, man? I you starting to struggle there, yeah, so I thought I uh, should get you a oh, coffee. Oh, thanks. Just what I needed. But remember, the longer you stop at a cafe, the worse the cafe days go. Mm. And we've always, we've all had those cafe yeah. days, haven't we? Takes a while to get going again. So only 10 minutes, and then we'll go going. After you've accomplished your first 50 kilometers, you're going to be feeling amazing. Accomplish something that you might thought that you've never accomplished on your bike. Yeah, and the challenge is, well, they don't stop here. Once you've done your 50K, you can go on to 100K, 200K, and they're just going to get bigger and bigger, more exciting, more adventurous. Trust me, you're going to have some amazing adventures on your bike. Hope this video has helped you on your way to your longest ride yet of 50 kilometers. Yeah, good luck, enjoy it, and embrace life on two wheels. If you enjoy this video, then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and let us know in the comment section below what you think, what's your furthest ride, and if you enjoy it too. And I guess we will see you in the next video. Hey, man on. <laughs>